So welcome to Race World Online. Real retro racing, old school racing, the days from no guts, no glory. Let's go and watch. American champion John Buffum with his BF Goodrich Audi Quattro. Harry Vatanen with the Rothmans Opel Manta 400. American John Woodner on one of the stages of the 1983 RAC rally at Castlecombe. Not sure which way he's going. Once again, John Buffum doing a bit of rallycross. Watch those tyres. And Stig Blomqvist awesome went on stuff. to win the 1983 Great. RAC rally. Ever spectacular Ari Vatanen, number six. Once again, John Buffum. Bit of the hey, star, mind Hope, the grass. Doing some more rally cross. Meanwhile, that man, Ari Vatanen, spinning on one of the stages. Onto the water splash at Sutton Park. Michel Mouton with the works Audi Quattro. Steam pouring from the car. Number one, Hannu Mikula. Henry Toivonen. Yeah. Meanwhile, Hannah Mikula there with yeah, a don't try this at home. front wheel. This was to lose him valuable time on the 1983 RAC rally. And then the wheel fell off, and uh, co driver Arnie Hertz had to get on, oh, the, this back is on the Audi Quattro in order to get it to the finish of the stage. No standing down the bottom, move further up the bank. Thank you very much, and this is the reason why they've got to move up the bank. Bruce Blake tries the bank for size on the 1983 Circuit of Ireland. Meanwhile, Penti Auricula with the Lancia Rally. Going well, or is he? He's disappeared from our view. Does a, a neat three or four point turn. And Penty gets away. Oh, Jimmy McRae goes on. out of the circuit of Ireland with a bang. You can see that coming. McRae driving the Rothmans Opel Ascona. On three wheels at the moment. And here we see that again in slow motion. Came over a brow and straight into the wall below our cameraman's feet. Scotsman Jimmy was a very popular driver in the British Isles. And here on the 1983 RAC rally, Jim McRae, he finished third with the Rothmans Opel Manta. Ever spectacular John Buffon. And Hannu Mikula. This is the Ferrari of Spanish champion Antonio Zanini. The most unusual rally car, the 308 GTB, seen in the 1984 European Rally Championship, as is awesome Henry Toyman with the Rothmans Porsche 911. Ever spectacular again, that's Jimmy McRae. Sideways, through the bend and completely crossed up at high speed. It's these sort of scenes that capture the imagination of the tens of thousands of spectators who come to watch special stages all over the world because international rallying is really very much a spectator sport. Meanwhile, back in Ireland, Sean Whoa. Campbell has a that problem like a negotiating line. a special Ooh. stage and lands up literally in the drink. This incident happened on the 1982 Circuit of Ireland. Sean Campbell getting out of the car, being left there upside down. His co-driver, incidentally, was a, a lady DJ from a local radio station, Linda Jane Carthens. I don't suppose she's going to be doing much rallying again. And is there anybody left in there? No, there isn't, but one very damaged Opal Ascona. In slow motion replay, Seems that uh, the Opal hit a tree stump, cartwheeled, and rolls into the lake. 
Next, we move on to the Marlborough British Formula 3 Championship, a series that is obviously very spectacular. A series like this costs a driver up to £120,000 a year. This is Brazilian Lewis Schaefer in the 1982 British Formula 3 Series. Mexicans well, Alfonso Tanidano and Enrique Bernardo from Argentina have a little bit of a squabble over a corner whilst James Weaver tries an unusual line at the Thruxton Complex corner. And Mexican Alfonso Toledano uh, tries any line going round Woodcut. Meanwhile, look at this for a novel way of getting through a chicane. It becomes an obstacle course. Wet weather is always a problem, and a problem for Johnny Dumfries. Well, slippery when wet. Hits the Woodcut chicane at Silverstone in April of 1983. as does Tim Lee Davy, who goes off in the same corner. And with the rain pouring down, Johnny Dumfries, who's making quite a name for himself in the British Formula 3 series of 1984, just does not want to give up. Up at Donington, Brian Dunning doesn't bother about the chicane. Back at Thruxton, Canadian Alan Berg has a touch of oversteer on his vault. But at Snellerton, he had a deflating tyre, and this is what happened. Oh my God, how could he lose that? He's out of oh. that race. Even the photographers look bemused, whilst Davy Jones takes another unusual exit line out of the Silverstone Woodcut chicane. Oh, but for one man, wrong. a very abrupt end to his race. Can see that this coming. shows you just how well catch fencing can work to slow down and stop a spinning or crashing car. Over at Macau, David Hunt, brother of James Hunt, crashes into the tyre walls, but everybody else misses him, but only just. The highlight of the British Formula 3 Championship was the season-long battle between Brazilian Ayrton Senator Silva and from Great Britain, Martin Brundle. At Alton Park, this is the way Well, driving in the wet conditions guarantees action. In 1984, Johnny Dumfries won the first two British Formula 3 series. And yes, it's Alan Berg who was battling there for the lead, spinning out of second place on a wet track. At the next round, Alan Berg actually had a little nudging match with the driver from New Zealand, Paul Radisic. From Belgium comes Hanneman with the Anson. And two Americans in a great hurry trying to get the same piece of tarmac. Ross Cheever, yes, it's him again, and Eric Lang. But why is Mario Hyten having his neck tested? The reason you're going to see now. Well, that was the wrong line. Lost of position. A little coming together there between David Hunt and Mario Hyten. Hyten in this number seven role obviously came off the worst. Well, you know what they say, where there's a will, there's a way. From the world of motor racing, we move to international motorcycling, the Grand Prix series for 500cc, a series that we're going to be seeing here on Sky Channel's International Motorsport. 1983 season was to be Kenny awesome Robinson's last Great. Grand Prix season. Leading this trio is the 1983 world champion on his Honda, Freddie Spencer. One man who's famous for his wheelies, Randy Mamola on his Suzuki. As is Marco Lucinelli, number one. And you can see just how dangerous motorcycling can be, the bike riders sliding off into the straw bales got to literally be riding by the seat of their pants. But even stunt riders can do it wrong. He's lost the uh, rear light and decides to get off his motorcycle. I don't know why. Somebody's obviously upset him. And in this little display, he tries it again, but crashes into the wall. Oh, this is hilarious. A question possibly of overdoing it. Look at this battle between Mamola and Lucanelli. And Ron Haslam almost coming to grief. 
Well, we've heard about bumping and boring, but there's a bit going on at the finish of the race at Donington. Eddie Kidd, will he or won't he? 28 cars to jump, and yes, he's done it. This is the 500cc race, the 1983 British Grand Prix, and this is what happened to Sandro Palandini. Palandini uh, badly broke his ankle, and we see this in freeze Whoa. frame. That looks like the wrong line. Ooh. Amazing pictures showing just how much the human body can stand. In the 250 race, that is Hervé Guillot. A similar accident to Palandini's, almost in the exact same spot, but he gets away with it. Once again, in the freeze frame. Other bike riders missing him, luckily, and Gilo going head over heels in front of the bike, whilst the bike ricochets against the barrier. From the world of motorcycle Grand Prix racing, back to saloon cars. We close this edition of International Motorsports. So that was it for now. Uh, if you enjoyed it, then you know where to find us. You can always subscribe. Cheers.